guys so obviously the first things that you will need to make this clock is your clock base and your hands so I'm using this 25 centimeter one from craft smart they do come in larger sizes um, but I think I always go with the 25 centimeter one because I think it's a really good size uh, to be doing intricate um, designs with um, obviously as you can see along here you can also get I'll oh, hold it up you can also get your numbers your hands and your battery pack from spotlight as well they come in a separate kit to the wooden clock base so keep that in mind they are two different parts um, I'm actually not using um, the hands and the clock um, mechanism bit that makes the hands turn um, from the craft smart range because I already have some from like I, I usually make clocks um, for customers and stuff like that so I buy my clock kits uh, separately uh, so I do have my mechanism and then in this little kit here you can see they are gold hands um, I'm still in two minds whether for this project I'm going to flip them around and use the silver side um, but they are supposed to be gold but it has my hours my minutes and my seconds and it also has all of the little nuts and bolts in there as well and as you can see it takes one double a is it a double a yes one double a battery okay uh, the numbers I don't actually have any numbers on me at the moment um, but at the time of filming this I am still in two minds as to whether I want to stick numbers on that are raised like this or if I'm just going to use some kind of vinyl to put my numbers on okay so if you want the 3d numbers that stick onto the clock you are going to need to buy them as well or you can do what I will probably end up doing which is with a lot of my um, clock projects is I pick a permanent vinyl um that I can use as my numbers uh having said that though because this whole clock when we're finished with it is going to get a coat of resin over it anyway you can use um temporary vinyl like Metamark M4 um because it's not going to matter because it's going to be under resin anyway so once you have all of your clock pieces you're ready to start your clock so first step in making your clock is to obviously take it out of its packaging if it wants to if it wants to come out and play like so I'm just gonna get my medium grit sandpaper and give it a quick little once over like so Okay. give it a bit of a brush down and now that's ready to spray paint uh, so for this project I do need a white base so I'm going to go ahead now and spray paint this white and then we'll be back for the next step alrighty so I have spray painted the base um, and now we're going to glitter it so I'm going to because this is the base and I want the peacock to be the main event um, I'm gonna go in with my tacket and some pixie dust from the shimmer shack um, and we're gonna do the tacket method so that the background is still nice and sparkly but it's not um, overtaking the main event so to speak okay uh, so I make up my tacket um, at a 50 50 like a one-to-one -one ratio so that's one part tacket to one part water um, and then I mix it really really well um, now I do know a lot of people have success using uh, tacket over and over straight out of the bottle uh, congratulations to them I wish I could when I when tacket first came out uh, would be in 2019 to 2020 maybe um, and everybody started using it um, I never had any luck uh, using um, straight tacket. Uh, my friend Jackie um, from Jackie Lopez uh, in New York actually was the one that told me to split it um, in a one-to-one -one ratio uh, which is what I do now and I have not had any problems with it since. So if you're if you've um, tried the tacket method before and you found that it doesn't work for you um, maybe try watering it down 
so uh, like the same amount of tacket to water you just mix it really 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 well with um, a paddle pop stick or a popsicle stick um, and then if you keep it in a little container it lasts forever so I am using a foam brush in the hopes that it minimizes um, brush strokes I'm just going to paint over the entire clock with a nice thick coat. foam brush is making a scraping sound because it's a wooden board <laughs> and to my ears it's like nails down a chalkboard I hate it that's horrible okay we're almost there there we go Okay, so there are some bits of random glitter. We're going to get rid of them. But that's looking nice and even. So I'm going to hit that with my heat gun now. Okay, so that's all dry. And we'll go in with our pixie dust. I love this glitter this and glass slipper are just dreamy okay I'm gonna get my scissors and we're gonna tap that off as best as we can Close that window so that it doesn't blow my glitter everywhere. And we're going to put away all of the good glitter. Um, I'm somebody that doesn't like to use or recycle is the right word actually. Um, the glitter that we're about to burnish off with the tacket method. Um, I know some people do, it's a personal preference, um, but to me I just like to keep my glitter nice and fresh. Um, the glitter that you burnish off um, isn't actually whole glitter <laughs> anymore obviously because some of it gets left behind on your project. Um, so personal choice for me um, is to never use the stuff that comes off my Tacket projects. I need a glove um, and I'm going to do the burnishing um, with the alcohol trick um, for no other reason than some of you may not have seen it done this way before and you might learn something new. So paper towel we're going to get our project and our alcohol and I'm going to spray the project 
make a good decent coat this works on tumblers as well and I'm going to get my paper towel and I'm going to wipe it away see how much that easier that is <laughs> than um, rubbing with your fingers okay so I'm going to do another coat because there's still a couple of sections I can see didn't burnish off properly and just give it that final rub Ta -da! isn't that pretty so pretty and that is our base okay um now I want to be the last I want to be the last oh my gosh good English Laura um, I want my final coat of resin to be the only coat of resin um, so I'm just going to go ahead and spray seal this um, probably tomorrow because it's quite late at night now when I'm filming this part but I will spray seal this tomorrow and then we will come back and we will continue on with how I do the peacock Okay guys, so it's finally time to get started on our glitter peacock. So I am using Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Um, the steps to do it in Cricut are the same as what you would normally follow um, to import your burst designs and whatever else. Um, so obviously you'd have to upload your SVG or your PNG file. Um, and then from here the steps are pretty much exactly the same except you're using design space instead of silhouette studio so here is our peacock uh, she comes from brave danger designs uh, as always everything that i use including links will be down in the description but here is our peacock um, i've also gone ahead and sized out um, what is essentially a visual representation of our clock now 25 centimeters in diameter is 9.843 inches so almost 10 inches but not quite so i have made my clock based on my screen so that i can kind of see how everything's going to go together and fit um, and then we can go ahead and cut from there so here is our peacock uh, when you first import her into your design program she is going to have a box around her i have gotten rid of the box just for the purpose of this project and also so that um, i can make the fill in black so that you can see it a little bit better on your screen but obviously we're going to have the little hole in the middle here where um the clock hands and the mechanism and everything go so I'm going to try and size her around the clock. Um, in a way that she fits, but we're also not losing too much. Um, of the design so I kind of want the hole to go in the middle um, let's move her in a little bit this way we're gonna make her a little bit taller we're gonna move that this way See if we can't get it to fit. And they're like that. And then we have, I've made these words to go on the clock as well, which say, those who dare to be different make the biggest difference. Um, which you saw at the beginning so that's going to be where I put everything and still have I need to make sure that I still have room for my numbers around the outside like that 
Okay, um, I did make up this one earlier. Okay, which for some reason I was able to fit a lot better. Um, I, it took me, honestly, probably more than half an hour to get our little friend to fit in a way where I could have her sitting on the clock, um, but she wasn't in the way of any numbers. Um, obviously, our seven and possibly our eight may get in the way of the feathers here. Um, but as you could see at the end, I'm, I'm going to work around that somehow. Um, and possibly the 10 here. Um, but this is how I wanted it to look. Um, I'm actually going to bring whoops, my words in just a little bit. Just so they're out of the way. Um, but yeah, I wanted it all to fit in a way where there was not going to be any... There we go, that's a little bit better. We don't want any interference. Um, there's not much that I can do about these feathers down here. Um, like I said, I, I tried sizing this up for a long while um, i'm not going to waste your time redoing it but you get the idea okay um keeping in mind that you've got to have numbers that go the whole way around and whatever else i'm still not happy with that difference i think i'm going to move that in just a little bit more like that maybe that way just a little bit there we go <clears throat> Um, but basically as you're designing your clock you've got to remember your hole in the middle where all of your mechanics and everything are going to sit um, your numbers around the outside where possible I'm not really concerned too much about these feathers but it was more the text I didn't want the numbers sitting over the text so once we have all that ready we can go ahead. Oh, the font that I'm using too, guys, is Villy. Um, I don't know if anybody else does this, but every time that I do a project, on the left-hand side here, under the text button, there's a little notepad. Um, you can click that and add notes to your project. Uh, do I want to delete this note? Yes, I do. Um, add notes to your project. I always put down what font I've used, just in case somebody sees the project on Instagram or Facebook or something and goes, I want this font. Right, I don't have to try and go through, you know, the tens of thousands of fonts that I have on my computer trying to remember which one it was. Um, I always make a note of which font. But we're going to go ahead and change my canvas size to A4. Uh, I use the double-sided tape, the A4 sheets from um, Poppy Crafts at Craft Online. I'll leave the link for those in the description below. Um, I just find that they're a lot more user-friendly. Um, bring that down like. I'm going to put a weeding box around it again, like so. But what I'm going to do is, whoops, let's realign that. My box, I'm going to change to a different color. Let's change it to black. Okay, these should all be red. Okay, so that when I now go to my cut screen, um, I can go by line and it's going to pick up the two different colors okay so the red lines which are our peacocks I can cut uh, really shallow like a burst and then my black line I can go ahead and change it to cut at like a cardstock setting so that when it goes through the machine it will actually cut a lot deeper around my box so that I'm just left with this box um, obviously being double-sided taped sheets, um, just peeling away all of this on the A4 sheet isn't going to be very beneficial because then it's going to leave the sticky layer. So by doing it with the two lines this way and actually having the box cut deep enough so that this square becomes a standalone project is going to save me a lot of hassle in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and get these cut now and then we will be back and we're going to start glittering. 
Okay, so let's get started on the glittering. Uh, now I forgot to mention as well, I have gone ahead and backed my um, glitter burst onto uh, white Metamark M7. Uh, if you haven't uh, checked out my double rainbow um, tutorial yet, uh, I, I highly recommend that you do that. I go into a little bit more detail on how to get um, a glitter burst and the way that I do it. Um, but I back my um, double-sided adhesive burst onto white vinyl for two reasons. One, it makes um, the double-sided tape a little bit more stable. Uh, when I go to try and put it on the clock or on a tumbler or anything like that, um, when I first started doing glitter bursts, um, the paper that I was using was very thin and it tore and... Um, ripped and folded over on itself and it was a huge big mess uh since switching to the poppy crafts one from craft online um it it wasn't as big of an issue um but it still caused a lot of anxiety uh and then on tiktok i saw somebody over in america i can't remember who it was sorry but somebody over in america um actually started putting their glitter bursts onto white vinyl to make it a little bit more stable uh so i started doing that as well to give it a crack and i've never had a problem with applying a burst onto a tumbler ever since uh obviously this is the first time i've put a glitter burst onto a clock so we shall see how we go um but it does make it a little bit thicker and a little bit more stable and easier to work with the second reason is that it doesn't make the glitter burst as transparent it gives it a nice white backing to make it a little bit more opaque when we go to do our glitter because obviously with glitter bursts you can't do more than one coat okay so the way that I've decided I'm going to go about this is I'm gonna go lightest color first and work my way through to the darker colors like the plum and the deep blue and the deep teal and then once all the glitters on I'm going to go through and peel off the outline and do the black as the very last for no other reason than this is a really intricate design um, I actually haven't done anything as detailed as this peacock before um, so you're gonna come on a journey with me to see if we can pull this off I'm pretty confident I'm quietly confident um, that we can do this but as I said I've um, stuck my pattern to the wall so we're going to start from the very top tail feather here and we're going to do all of the mint madness first uh, mint madness is all through the tail feathers um, I know I found it sorry I went off and I was like I don't think I've put mermaid sparkle into my pattern but I have there's there's a little bit through the neck um, but mid madness is all through the tail feathers and through the neck of the peacock as well so we'll get started on that first and I'm just gonna take off it's the same section on all of the tail feathers so that makes it a little bit easier to figure out we just have to go slow and steady so that we don't mess this up uh, anybody that has done glitter bursts before knows exactly what I'm talking about um, the more that you do your project and the the more it goes along um, the more anxiety starts building because the worst thing that can happen is to get almost to the end of a glitter burst and somehow manage to stuff it up so we are going to go slow and steady the technique is pretty much the same throughout the whole burst we're just lifting now that it's cut um, we're just lifting section by section because the double-sided tape is here remember um, I'm not even in frame <laughs> There we go. Uh, the double-sided tape is obviously sticky, right? So we want to expose the sections that we want to glitter bit by bit, color by color. Um, because obviously when we go to dump glitter over it, it's only... Oh, that's tricky. The glitter is only going to stick to the sticky parts. 
So the process is the same. Um, we're just going to work section by section, colour by colour, um, until she's all done. And then will come the nail biting task of getting the outline to lift. Um, which honestly is probably the part that I am most nervous about because it's right at the end and it's the thinnest part so may the craft gods journey with us on this project start praying for me I don't mind to who anybody that's gonna listen <laughs> Um, I also noticed um, this is the first burst that I've done since finally setting up my Cameo 4. Um, I bought my Cameo 4 in July last year. Um, I kept it for Christmas. Um, gave it to myself. My Well, my kids gave it to me for Christmas, but I'm a single mum, so I bought it for me. Um, my kids gave it to me for Christmas and then it sat in a box until about six weeks ago, maybe a month ago, um, when I finally got around, because I had a, a portrait 2 and a cameo 3 already, um, so I've been, I've just been using them. I uh, finally got around to unboxing it and setting it up and using it. Uh, on my cameo 3, I found that bursts uh, with a new blade, I had to put it on blade 1, force... 8 speed 4 from memory. Um, I actually found with this new Cameo 4 um, that the blade had to be on 3 uh, even though it's a relatively new blade I found that quite odd. Blade 3 force 11 and the speed was still 4. So I hope that helps. Um, if you have a Cricut, I don't have a Cricut, I'm sorry I can't help you, um, but I have heard uh, people have a lot of success using the washi tape setting for their bursts on their cricket so i hope that that helps just gonna do this little bit in the eye where did that oh here it is i'll say where did that go okay now i have to count some scales one two three four five six seven eight nine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think it's this middle one here. And then this one here. They're not scales, they're you. You know what I mean. This one here. sort of are scales I mean birds are descendants of dinosaurs and dinosaurs had scales and we skip these two and then it's this one here and then this one here Looks like this tiny little one here. I'm not even. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, I'm not even sure I can get that to lift. Okay, so this will be all Mint Madness. I think I've mentioned before but um, I have a friend that's also a customer uh, she used to watch me go live in my little customer group um, and she used to have to mute um, my video when I started tapping my glitter because it was just something about that tap 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 noise it was like nails on a chalkboard for her and it used to drive her nuts
Do, 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 do. And around the light as well. If we do that, then we get our little. Now that's interesting. <sighs> here it is. I was going to say, oh, here comes the rain. I say, I can't find my dry brush. Anyone else sleep better when it's raining? I hate it when it rains during the day because, like, blur, that's boring. But I do love listening to the rain as I'm going to sleep. Okay, so we have, I know it doesn't look like much now, it just looks like a bunch of weird looking horseshoes. But we have our first colour down. Okay, so I'm going to clean up my desk and then we'll come back. Um, we might do the gold next. Let's see. Okay, moving on. I have, in fact, decided that we're going to do the gold next uh, because the gold is the only other colour which is on... Oh, that's not true because the, the um, Kiss Me Arm Irish is, is as well, but that's a darker colour. Um, but the gold is makes up... Um, part of every one of his tail feathers as well <clears throat> so we're gonna keep it simple stupid until we get the basics down and then once we've got a lot of the more dominant dominant's not the right word you know the colours that are in every section? What's the word I'm looking for? We're going to use dominant. The more dominant colours. Uh, then hopefully that has filled it in a little bit more. Um, and then it starts to get a little bit easier. From there. Make sure that that's pushed back down because we don't want it getting up under there. Um. I've just got to remember to leave a section for the outline. Right, so instead of it going like teal, mint, gold, it goes teal, then black, then mint, then black, then gold. Does that make sense? Um, so I've got to keep remembering that I have to leave that outline. Otherwise we will get to the end and I'll be like, who the fuck did I'm a bit disappointed because the rain only lasted like five minutes. I thought we were gonna get some free meditation tracks from nature tonight, but nope. Okay, this one hasn't cut the whole way through, so I've just got to be careful as I lift it that I'm not taking. the outline with me. Where's my trusty little... Just need that one bit of paper to come up. Got it. That was a bit rude. Okay. It's 
another one that didn't want to pop up nicely. They're cut through, they're just, like I said, because it's such an intricate design. We just gotta. do it a little bit more tortoise and a little bit less hair um. I am finding that running my weeding tool underneath it helps it pop up easy as well um, so if you do end up doing this design I hope that that helps um, if you get stuck like me well I mean knock wood I haven't gotten stuck it can just be a little bit frustrating that's all getting there almost done We'll do Sandman together and then I might finish off the tail feathers at least. Do it, well, maybe I might do a couple more colours by myself and then I'll come back. There's how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's nine colours in the design. So eight colours plus the black. So. I reckon if we do two together and then I do two off camera and then come back and do two together do two off camera and then come back what's that two four six yep and then come back and do the black outline together then hopefully that is enough content to keep you guys happy without boring you out of your brains what do you reckon good compromise I thought so too. Okay, so all the tail feathers are done. Um, now the beak. is gold and then we have I'm gonna call them scales for lack of a better word there's a couple of gold ones oh no idea where that one went and then Follow it down this way to this one. This tiny little one here. Okay, that's it. So the gold I'm using isn't a true gold, it's more of a champagne gold. We're going in with Sandman. Okay, and same deal again. I'm gonna dump the glitter. On the spots that I want to rub it into. Just 
which is a little bit hard considering that like the entire tail <laughs> has gold on it okay come up through the neck and the beak and now I'm just gonna smoosh tiny little circular motions to get my glitter to stick to that double sided tape Now I have tried to use as many metallics on this as possible. Um, like I said, you can only do one coat of glitter on a glitter burst. Um, and I just find metallics do have the best coverage. Um, there are a couple of hollows. The Mint Madness that we started with, that's a hollow. Um, and the Penny for Your Thoughts, which is the brassy copper one, um, that's also a hollow. Um, but otherwise the rest of them are metallics just because I find that they give better coverage um, So if you've never done a glitter burst before try and use metallics um, You will get a better result um, I'm not saying only use metallics um, If you want a little bit of variety metallics or hollows um, I try to avoid iridescence where you can um, Just because they can be a little bit more transparent um, and in my experience, you usually need to get, excuse me, you need to use more than one coat um, for iridescence, which isn't going to work on a glitter burst. But that is our little peacock. See, he's got his little beak now and the eyelids and some of his neck and all of his feathers are starting to take shape as well. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go through now, clean up my desk, do another couple of coats. Not a couple of coats, sorry, another couple of colours. Um, I might do these two. Um, the dark teal is the centre spot of all of our feathers. Um, and there is um, some of that light mermaid sparkle through the neck. Um, and then we'll come back and do... Let's do these two together and then I'll finish up with the blue. There's some blue just through the plumage at the top here um, and the brass is the outside of some of the feathers and then we'll be ready to do the outline together. But this is where we're at. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, so I did the Kiss Me I'm Irish and the Mermaid Sparkle. Let's see if I can stay in frame. Uh, the mermaid sparkle is through this neck part and this plumage here. And then the kiss me I'm Irish you can see through the middle of all of the feathers. There's a little bit there. And then his head and his neck have also been done. So that is where we're at. Isn't she pretty? So I'm going to do Sea Witch and Bleeding Heart now. Um, so let's do Bleeding Heart first. We have a couple of pieces. This is the pink, like the rose magenta. Um, this part here. And then we have couple of these feathers here okay now it is this one and then there's also a little bit here and a little bit here and this part here Oh, no, you stay where you are, thank you. Um, this big one down here. That part there. She's good. 
got me together. I love when your imagination starts um coming to fruition, don't you? <laughs> I love it. It's the little things that are still worth getting excited over, isn't it? Um, this one here. This one doesn't want to play with us. There we go. Um, this one here is pink. Wow, I put down a lot more pink than I thought I did. That's alright. Um, yep. And this one here, and then that's it. Okay. That's a lot more pink than I thought, but that's okay. So this pink finishes off a lot of the tail feathers and a little bit of the body. It's all here. Okay. While you're rubbing the glitter in, um, as you move your finger around, you can actually feel um, where the glitter is sticking to. The rest of it has kind of, um, is either still smooth, um, because you haven't taken it off yet, um, or it's raised because you've already put glitter on it. Um, so your finger is actually finding the dips that you are now filling because um, obviously when you take that, that layer of um, paper off it creates a slight dip that's what you're looking for so once that's all done and dusted literally Bit of a wipe down onto the floor. See, we're starting to get some tail feathers. Oh, she's gonna be so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna pack my bleeding heart away. Haha. <laughs> um, and I'll be back to do the sea witch. Alrighty, last one before we start doing our outline. is Sea Witch. So, uh, this is just all to finish off some of the tail feathers. I did not put the purple anywhere else. Um, that's why I was surprised that there was so much pink because there's not that much purple. Um, but the purple is a plum, so it is a darker colour. Um, I wanted to like obviously you need contrasting but I wanted it to try and avoid it being dark um, we want bright happy stunning show-offy peacock um, because Anna is my polar opposite and I would probably love a dark and brooding peacock <laughs> that's more my style than Anna's um, Oh, I missed a spot with the... There's one, two, three sections here that are supposed to have Kiss Me, I'm Irish. And I've completely left them out. So I will have to go back and do them. 
Okay, so Sea Witch. And again, we're going to rub. Give it a shake onto my floor because I can always sweep later. And now we have that beautiful plum color through there as well. So that is where we are at with her. Okay, uh, all this section here is all of the penny for your thoughts and the phantom. Um, Penny for Your Thoughts also makes up what we've got left of the tail feathers. Um, and then she, and as I said, there's a couple of parts over here that I need to fill in with Kiss Me I'm Irish because I forgot about them. But she's more than halfway, guys. So I am going to go ahead. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and go to bed now and finish filming this part tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the last two colours off camera. And then I'll come back and we'll do the black outline together. And then it will be ready to move on to putting her onto the clock. She's finished. Look. Isn't she pretty? Uh -huh. I'm just going to take a minute to uh, peacock a bit about how cool this looks. I'm so happy. Okay. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Um... I put, if you can see, this top feather is a little bit how you doing. Um, I put down Penny for Your Thoughts, and the colour was very, very similar to the Sandman that we've used in the gold, and you couldn't actually tell the difference. I'll hold it up. So, I switched to uh, Pink and Purple Monkey's Coffee Bean, uh, number 168. Um, which is more of a chocolate brown than a copper brass, but it came up. It's enough of a color difference to get the two-tone. Here it is again, right through there. It's dark enough to give us a difference between that and the gold, um, but because I'd already put the Penny for Your Thoughts down on this one, um, I did this one as a tester first because I was a little bit... Um, when I went to use it, I was like, hmm. It was throwing a lot of rainbows, which usually isn't a bad thing, but for this project, we didn't want, you know, super multicolor, um, and I wasn't happy with it. So I went ahead and did the coffee bean on the rest of it, and then I came back to this and put a thin layer of tacket over what I'd already done, and then put the coffee bean back over it. So it's a little bit messy at the moment, but bearing in mind, we're going to be lifting up um, the outlines and whatnot. Um, so hopefully that cleans that up a little bit more, but I just wanted to mention it's, I tried, I did try, um, but it just was, it was too similar in color and I really wanted that contrast effect. So I did swap the glitters for that, but now I'm going to move you up so that I can stay in frame because I'm going to be moving our lady all over the place. Now comes the nerve wracking part. I'm, I'm hoping because I've done it this way that the outline is going to lift up for me really, really easily. Um, rather than doing it back to front where we did the outline first, I feel like that would have been a lot more work because I would have had to have made sure that all of our sections in between stayed put. Um, also, I realised when I was um, going about my business, this little part here has lifted up and we've lost our ability to put the outline in there. Um, so once everything is said and done, I'm going to go in with a really fine paintbrush um, and some tacket and fix that bit up so that that's black as well because that's supposed to be the black outline. So 
first things first we're going to take that little bit out of her nose and we're going to start around her head feathers Peeling down. <coughs> so far, so good. Theoretically speaking, it should all come off in one piece now because the whole outline is connected. Um, time will tell. She's coming. <laughs> She's coming. Feels like one of the parts that didn't cut through all the way because there's a little bit of resistance. So I'm going to go in with my exacto knife, run my knife along there, and that should hopefully encourage that little bit of paper to come up because if there's paper on there then our glitter isn't going to stick is it no other areas I think we're good are you ready I'm ready She fades away into the dark abyss. And we'll come back and get her in a minute. Alright, so because the black pretty much covers the whole project, I'm not even trying to find the gaps this time. I'm just rubbing over the whole project. There's nothing left now anyway. Um, for it to stick to except what we just peeled up so oh my god's good grace oh my god oh my god it worked I can give this a really good dry brush now And there she is. Isn't that spectacular? Look, please focus. All of the black outlines are done. Ah, isn't she amazing? I'm so happy with that. All right. So the next steps now will be to give this 
a really good dry brush. There's still some sections in it um, where the black um, is still, it's not stuck down, it's just sitting there. Um, trying to be all sneaky and quiet like there's one little section here which it looks like the paper didn't peel so I might fix that um, but I don't want to throw too many colors into my black so I'm going to clean up my black first give it a really good dry brushing um, and then I'm going to go out and spray seal the shit out of it because uh, I don't want any of these colors to move ever for any reason um, and then once she's spray sealed we're going to cut her out and we're going to put her on the clock. So I will be back. She's ready. So she's been spray sealed. Um, I cut her off camera as well. Um, I didn't think I would put you through the ordeal of trying to see me cut her out. Um, and try to stay in frame at the same time. Because I'm blind as a bat. So I had to have it like this far away from my face to see the lines to make sure that I was cutting straight um, <clears throat> but I just used normal craft scissors and cut her out um, I wasn't I didn't want to get this far and manage to stuff it up so I didn't do in between her head but if you can see I did peel up and put some pixie dust in those white parts in the hopes that when she sits on here it doesn't show up as noticeable like it's still glittery um the other option is once she's on i could i mean i suppose i could go in with an exacto knife and try and cut it out we'll see how we go okay but making sure that our clock is gonna be able to be hung up okay so this is 12 up here. Um, we want her kind of sitting. In there like that. Because so 6 is here. Yeah. Okay. So we want her not over the six so about there all right so i'm going to <sighs> breathe laura breathe laura have <laughs> Uh, I just think she's beautiful and I have um, isn't she lovely I have that song in my head at the moment looking at the peacock <laughs> alright you know what we're going to peel back our vinyl backing first okay now we're going to go back in and position her where we want her that is six Six is there. We want to sit like that. Like that. Okay. So now push that down onto there like that and now she won't move so we can just 
start very gently because we don't want to rip because if I rip this you guys are going to see me have an actual breakdown on camera like I, I would cry <laughs> So, we've gotten to a bit of a tricky part. Because of the way her head curves it's just it's awkward she's a bit awkward our girl when art imitates life am I right oh breathe gotta breathe gotta make sure oh look that doesn't look too bad you can't even tell that i haven't cut out the head unless you're looking real close but that is how what you can't even see that is how the clock will go so that's six here that's 12 up here she's on look at that oh my god look at that oh, okay so we can all take a deep breath because the hardest parts of this project are now over touch wood all that i've got to do now is put the text on um put the numbers on um and then we can put our coat of resin over it all and put it together from there so um i'm gonna go away now yeah you can't even tell unless you're looking up close that all blends in really nicely i'm so happy with that oh I wasn't sure if I was going to bite off more than I could chew. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what design I wanted to do it with. But I've never done a glitter burst this intricate before. And I've never tried to put a glitter burst on a clock. Um, so there was a lot of firsts in this project for me. But uh, <laughs> I love it. Okay. So um, I'm going to do... I'm going to go off camera now. I'm going to measure up to make sure that my text measurements um, are going to fit. I might actually do it in a way where it goes this way now instead of across this way. Um, and do my numbers as well. Actually, that's not right. It sits like that. So yeah, I might curve my words this way a little bit more. Put our numbers on. Um, I'm still into, originally I was going to put all 12 numbers on the clock. Now I'm wondering if I should just do 12, 6, 3 and 9. Um, and not have anything else. So, I'm in two minds what I want to do there. But I'm going to go and measure everything off camera. Figure out what my spacing is and cut our vinyl. And then I'll be back to put our vinyl on and then put our coat of resin on. Okay, so I came back to film. As you can see, we've got words. Um, I was actually filming for about 10 minutes uh, before I realized that it had stopped filming after 16 seconds because I had no room left on my hard drive. So, you know, that, that's always fun. I, I really love when technology doesn't just do its job so that I can do mine. I can't tell you how much joy it puts in my heart when my computer doesn't no, no do the workies <laughs> anyway all we've missed is me putting the vinyl on basically um and also realizing that having it 
like that. Um, the peacock looks funny. So we are turning it so that it sits on the wall as a diamond rather than a square. And I'm going to have to go to Spotlight and get one of those wall hanging things that you can um, screw in with the tiny, tiny little screws to the back so that she can still hang it up. Um, so yeah, my boo-boo. But as you can see, I've also gone in. Th this is my little trick um, to figuring out where the numbers go now when it's a case like this where you have the mounted box for the clock to sit into i use i line up painter's tape so that the paint the edge of the painter's tape well, is directly in line with the corner and i feed it out in a straight line and hook it over slightly so that as i'm putting the numbers on right i know that the top of this line of tape is going to be where the middle of my three is okay on the opposite side or the bottom sorry on the opposite side i know that the top if i follow that around this is where my nine is gonna my three is gonna sit sorry three and nine right so it kind of just having that little overlap i now know sort of where i have to put the middle of the number um and I do it that way. Um, I don't do it with all of the in-between numbers because anybody that's made clocks before will know. Um, but if you haven't, the easiest way to make sure that the numbers line up as best as possible is to do your 12, 6, 3 and 9 first and then evenly space the other two numbers between the four that you've put down. As long as you have your north, south, east, west, so to speak, the rest of it will fall into place quite easily. Um, I have made the executive decision on this clock though that all we're going to do is the four. Alrighty, final stretch uh, which is of course putting our coat of resin on and then putting our clock parts on. Um, so uh, I have already mixed up uh, 30 mils of Amazing Clearcast Plus um probably probably we'll probably need the whole 30 mils uh having said that um we don't want it too thick um uh because the way that these clocks go together if you make it too thick you're not going to be able to get your hands um on the little bit that sticks up uh on the um mechanism bit that makes the hands turn you know what i'm talking about um so yeah 30 mils should be right may end up using a little bit less we'll see how thirsty she is when we go to put the resin on her um she shouldn't be too bad because she's already been spray sealed but we'll, we'll we'll see what happens uh second thing i have gone ahead and done is this white stuff around the outside and in the middle here is liquid latex uh this is what i use for my clocks my chopping boards uh stuff like that um anything that um are the little plywood coasters that you can do a anything like that where we're going to be pouring resin on and it's going to be dripping over the side especially if it's a circular motion um i know that a lot of people use painters tapes for chopping boards and stuff like that and that works as well um but being circular it's going to take a little while to um lay the painter's tape down and have it work so for projects like this i use liquid latex you can buy it from any special effects or costume most costume stores any special effects place um, and i just use a silicon brush dip it oh this is it this is, whoop, where's the front this is the liquid latex that i use okay so that's it there um i just glob it on um make sure that your layer isn't too thick uh, uh, too thin sorry you do want it nice and thick because that's going to make it a lot easier to peel up at the end and you're not going to damage your blank okay so a nice thick coat around the outside i've also done the middle here for any resin that drops through there any drips that land on this now at the end um it does dry clear it's still drying because it's so thick but it's it's not going to be a problem um but it basically all you have to do and i'll show you at the end is you rub it and it starts rolling up and you can take it all off as one piece and all the little drips of resin come with it as well. Hi guys, a quick safety disclaimer for when working with resin. Please make sure you always protect yourself by wearing eye goggles or other protective eyewear. 
a half face respirator mask with interchangeable filters. I got mine from Bunnings and they also sell the replacement filters. And of course, gloves. Now I prefer to work with nitrile gloves, but in a pinch, vinyl gloves will also work. These are the two types that will not tear easily when working with resin. Please make sure you stay safe while you're having fun and happy creating. So. down like so put my glove on and away we go I might just put my fingers in the wet latex Follow me for more cool tips. <laughs> Treat it like a lazy Susan. So what I didn't want to happen, that's why I've been letting it sit about a day and a half now. And that three still lifted a little bit. Should be alright, but I'll have to keep an eye on that cheeky bugger. Rude. Like it's about it. So I'm just going to pour it. What we had left in the container on the top. And I'll hit it with heat in a second. Um, just to warm up the resin a little bit and get it to... Oh, you stay put. Because if you don't, and I've done all of this just to have you not stay in your spot, man. Oh, oh, oh. oh you're going to oh boy. Okay. There's always something, isn't there? That's alright. I might watch a little bit of true crime and just keep my eye on him and just keep pushing him down with, I don't know, a little toothpick or something. I'll find something. Just to keep pushing it down until it stops coming back up again. Um, okay. First off. I'm going to spray it with a little bit of alcohol and then plug in my heat gun because if you don't plug it in it's not going to work <laughs> okay Don't touch without a glove. So 
just a couple of tiny bits of where the resin hasn't gotten on the glitter. Oh, we can all breathe a sigh of relief. She's done. It could have gone either way, really. I mean, if it had gone the other way, then this video would never exist and you'd be none the wiser. And But here we are. <laughs> Just between you and me and the rest of the internet, there have been quite a lot of videos that I have done that you guys will never see because it was an absolute disaster. <laughs> Just quietly. <laughs> um, you, you, you put your best foot forward on the internet, don't you? So there's a lot of things that you guys don't see that happens. Uh, maybe I should start up a bloopers channel one day. Keep you all entertained with exactly how much I shake my head at myself for being an absolute idiot. But she worked. This one worked. This one worked this time. She's going to be so pretty. I don't want to move her around too much because um, I want it to be level. I'm just going to slide that under like that because this end of my garage dips that way. So if I put it under that side it'll lift it up and now it's sitting even. And um, we're not going to have it all run off the clock and make me cry. But that is my happy birthday Anna Peacock wall clock. Ta -da. So all that's left now is to put uh, the parts in. Um, I ended up having to buy the kit from Spotlight. You want the small clock kit for the 25 centimeter base. Um, they do have black, gold, and silver available in the large clock set. But as I said, I think that's 32 centimeters from memory. Um, but like I said, this time I just picked to do the 25 uh, because I was hoping to use the clock kit that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, but when it came to sizing it all up uh, just before I mixed my resin to do this, um, the clock mechanism has a little... Oh, shoot. Where did I put it? It has a little um, plastic thing at the top right here. That The clock bases that these are for is usually for big ones like this, right? This is a placemat. <laughs> but see how it's flat and it doesn't have the things, right? That and the resin molds. Um, do you remember when everybody was making little clocks out of resin? They, f they sit on them as well and then you can hang them up. Um, I just thought that they'd all work the same. This one, if you remember, has that wooden box around the back to hold the kit into. Um, and this part won't fit won't allow it to fit in um, the little box enough that this part, this is the part I was talking about before that your hands sit on, right? That's why you don't want your resin too thick, this part. Um, the clock sits here, sort of. So I have no way of screwing on the little nut um, to hold it in place and then put the hands on it as well. Um, so I am going to go to Spotlight um, and buy, I think it only comes in black um, for the small clock, but I'm going to buy the clock kit to fit this clock uh, in the morning and then I'll come back and put it all together and I'll also try and remember to bring a double A battery in with me because they take double A batteries. But I'm going to let this cure overnight um, and then we'll put the clock together tomorrow. Sorry guys. So here she is, she's done, she's finished, and she's ready to put back together. That's what she looks like, all resined up. What do you reckon? Isn't she pretty? I was so chuffed. Um, I also went and got the clock kit, which is this Craft Smart one, okay? 
Uh, making sure if you're using the 25 centimeter clock base to get the 25 centimeter clock kit, they also come in 32 centimeters. Um, black was the only get off. Black was the only color that you could get for um, the small base as a kit. And then I saw that they also had gold hands. Um, if you wanted to buy the kit and then swap it out for gold as well. Whereas the large clock base for this brand has uh, black, gold and silver kits that you can buy as well. So it's personal preference. Um, I also, I remembered my battery. So as you can see, I'll put them side by side. This is the one that we were going to use with the plastic bit on it that didn't fit in the little box at the back. This one this part comes off right um and as i mentioned before when we put this clock together instead of it being like that it's going to hang on the wall like that so um had we put her together in a way where that could have sat in there like so right it'd be ready to hang up because we're on an angle slightly we're going to take it off we're going to put the clock together and then i'm going to get some which way does it go this way um some super glue or something and glue it onto the back of the clock so that when she hangs it up she can hang it up well i'm not even at the right part she can hang it up on the wall like that okay with our little bit so just something to keep in mind um don't panic too much um about that okay so <gasps> i lost me nuts okay so it comes in you have your little gold nut and you also have a washer the washer goes on the bottom like that your clock kit then goes in the hole like so okay and then our little washer our um, nut sorry screws onto the top and I always find this bit real fiddly because I got fat fingers making sure that that is centered and on nice and tight um when i put this together to post i'm going to make sure that this is so tight that it won't ever come off again um like i said i want to put another coat on it so i don't want to put it on too tight but from here you want to put get our hand our hand minute hand second yes that's right so our first then minute and then the second hand if you see it's a pin goes into the hole in the middle and that is what will keep it all together like so Ta -da. let's set it for 430 now if we put where do I put my battery She starts ticking away. That is my glittered peacock clock for Anna's birthday. What do you guys reckon? 
please let me know what you thought of this project in the comments. Um, <clears throat> I do a lot of Cricut crafts and tumblers and stuff like that. Um, it's not often that I will step outside my comfort zone and do something like this that I've never done before. Um, only because I want to bring you quality content and actually know what I'm doing um, when I'm explaining how to do it to you guys so that it's easier for you guys to follow along. So if you like content like this, um, where I film stuff that I'm given a crack for the first time, um, let me know. Um, if you prefer the whoops, if you prefer the more polished tutorials where it's step by step and I know exactly what I'm doing and you can follow along a bit easier, let me know as well. But what do you reckon? So that is it for me for this video, guys. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in and watching. Um, if you haven't already, please take a moment to hit that thumbs up button and click the red subscribe button. It means the world to me to have you as part of my little community. Um, and I really hope to see you again. Stay safe out there, guys. Bye.